This is Andy Perawa for Boxing News. I'm joined by Mike Coppinger here in New York at the weigh-in for Lopez and Taylor. Tifima Lopez coming in and having to weigh in naked. Mike, just your reaction to that? Um, yeah, he made the weight, uh, but he was telling me yesterday that Josh Taylor was killing himself to make weight. It looks like Josh made the weight certainly more comfortably than Tifima Lopez did. And I'm not a body language expert. I know boxing fans and boxing media pretend to be, but it just seemed like Taylor was more into it, was more feeling fresh, was the one that seemed more confident to me. Is there anything you can read uh, when read into? Sorry, when it comes down to Tiafimo having to weigh in naked, you know he's, he's the fresher of the two at 140. So is it a surprise to you that he's reached that point where he had to strip down naked? You, know, you never know with these guys. I mean, maybe Taylor had certainly Taylor must have had a better camp. Uh, you know, he's, he's definitely said all the right things. He, um, I know when he, you know, he's had a lot of injuries to deal with the torn plantar fascia, and these all these different injuries, fight postponements. So I think he's like itching to get back in there and. You have to imagine that Tio is too, because you could argue that both guys are really coming off losses. That's what's going to be my next question. A lot of people questioning their most recent performances. It's been a heated build-up. What do you expect when they step between the ropes tomorrow night? I think it's going to be a really exciting fight. I think these both guys want to make a statement, and you just have to favor Josh Taylor, I think. He's the bigger, stronger guy. If he can insert himself in the inside, I think he wins. See if he was going to have to keep the fight on the outside a little bit, and I think try to catch Josh Taylor coming in. We've seen Bob Aaron mention that he's looking at potentially a Devin Haney facing the winner of Saturday night. Do you have anything in terms of your own knowledge as to where Devin Haney's career will lie next? I mean, Devin Haney doesn't know what he's doing yet. He's gonna, you know, he's a free agent. He's gonna field a lot of offers, and the biggest fight out there for him clearly is Javante Davis. I'm not, I don't know that that's, that's even being discussed, but that's the biggest fight out there that you can make for him. And outside of that, I think it's the Lomachenko rematch. But if he's gonna go to 140, you know, Devin's already reached out to Eddie Hearn about fighting Regis Progre. That's an excellent fight as well. What do you think the likelihood is that we might see a Regis Progre fight? Sorry, say again? The likelihood that we might see a Regis Progre fight. I think there's a very good chance we see that fight. I mean, Bill Haney's right over there, so maybe we can ask him, but, um, you know, Progre's going to fight against Cirilla and not going to have any problems there, I'm sure. And that would be a great first fight for Devin Haney in 140, a very tough fight. We saw the difficulties in how long it took to get Tank and Ryan over the line. A Tank and Haney fight would be even bigger now. Do you think, how, how difficult of a fight, rather, would you think that would be to make? I think all these fights, uh, unfortunately, at the top level of the sport are difficult to make because a lot of guys want a lot of money and there's a lot of egos involved, and that's just the way boxing is. But, you know, I, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure that there's going to be uh, some sort of offer for Devin. You'd have to imagine to fight Gervonta Davis. Well, I just want to look that as well. I'm a heavyweight division. A lot of frustrations with that. I mean, when you're seeing all these great fights being made lower down, talk about the Saudi Arabia deal, the Bonanza, Wilder, Joshua, Fury, Usyk. Do you have any knowledge as to where things currently stand? Obviously, Eddie Hearn's been vocal this week saying that he's received an, an offer for Joshua Wilder. Nothing, nothing in writing, but he's got at least got an offer to work with. The Saudis certainly have the money to do it and they have the desire to do it. It's just a matter of, again, we're, not, we're talking about now four different fighters, four different teams. Not the easiest thing to do, and I think the Saudis, you know, the Saudis have shown that they can make big fights, but the boxing skeptic in me says, are we really going to see fights, two fights of that magnitude on the same night? Let's see, it would be great. Uh, Bob Aaron reiterated just that Tyson wants to get out maybe September time, he wants to fight once before December. Where is he looking in terms of opponents? You know, he was looking at Andy Ruiz. Tyson said that Andy Ruiz was asking for $20 million. Um, he was looking at Zalil Zhang and Joe Joyce. Obviously, Zhang beat Joyce, and now they're going to rematch in September. So I think you're probably looking at the third tier of heavyweights. I had heard that maybe Luis Ortiz was in the mix at one point. I think the, that level of heavyweight you're looking at. There were obviously some reports and some talks of the Anthony Joshua fight potentially taking place. That seems to be a bit kind of dead in the water now. But did you think it was ever realistic? I never thought it was all that realistic. I think we've been down this road too many times, and I think if it's going to happen, it's going to have to be after Fury fights Usyk. I think I think we are going to see Fury Usyk at some point. It makes way too much sense. All right, Mark, listen, I know you're a busy man. You've got to shoot off, so I appreciate your time as always. Thank you. Thank you.